Welcome to handy learning and to language learning mechanisms. If you want to know what happens in our brain when we learn a language, stay until the end of the video. Welcome to another handy lesson. On this video, we're going to talk about the language learning mechanisms. So let us start with the lesson. Well, the different content that we're going to, to go through are language learning implications, cognitive mechanisms, affective mechanisms, and biological mechanisms. Let us start with language learning implications. When we talk about learning, we're talking about two different implications here. We have explicit learning and implicit learning. Psychologists have found that when we are, when we put our brain into the learning process, there are two areas in our brain that are receiving that information. One goes for the explicit and one goes for the implicit. Right in this moment, both things are happening right now on your brain. The explicit learning is all the information that you are conscious that you are receiving. You are focusing your attention on some specific traits of information that I'm giving to you. When you are conscious about that, then that is explicit learning. But there are other items during the explanation that I am giving right now and in any moment of learning. And those little items which are not perceived by your conscious mind, that those are the implicit learning. The best analogy they made is the brain is to have a brain Look at the brain as if it were an iceberg, when the explicit learning is just the part of the iceberg that we see. But the, the iceberg that is under the, the sea is the implicit learning, and that is the biggest part, because everything that we are acquiring and receiving goes actually through the subconscious mind. So there are these two factors, the explicit learning and the implicit learning. If we talk about language, teaching and language learning, the same is happening. So when we give a class as English teachers, all the information that are providing our students is explicit. But usually those little details that are around are the ones that are going to go to their mind in the implicit learning. So there's a lot more uh, to talk about this topic, but just for you to know and have the idea of what implicit and explicit learning are, is uh, just stay with that information by now. After that, then we should talk about the different mechanisms that are happening in, uh, in a person when he is learning a second language. The first set of mechanisms is the cognitive mechanisms. These mechanisms happen in the brain, and we know them as cognitive skills as well. And they are memory, thought, logic and reasoning, mobility, perception, and attention. If we talk about memory, memory is the ability that we have to store, retain, and retrieve information that we have received, either in the short or in the long term. Then we have thought. Thought is an essential part of a cognitive process because it allows people to engage in decision-making. It's all the concepts that we have as humans and happening in our brain. That will be the thought, right? And we, it, it is also connected to the next uh, skill, which is logic and reasoning. Through our thoughts, we find logic to the things that we are seeing, and we find reasoning behind those little things. So we have the ability to solve problems, but also to communicate. Mobility is that aspect of our brain of connecting the thoughts to our mouth so we can produce sounds and we can produce words that express what we are thinking. So mobility is bringing our mental concepts into words and concepts as well. Perception, it says, is a cognitive process that allows people to take in information using their senses. When we perceive information, we can do it through 
our visual, uh, our auditory, or also through the movement, okay, through different things that are happening around us. And uh, through our senses, we are perceiving information and that will become perception because it might influence the concepts that we receive or the information that we get and also remember. Attention is a cognitive process that allows people to focus on a specific stimulus in the environment. I don't know if I still got, have your attention right now, but it is that ability that you focus your, your attention on a specific stimulus. In this case, this PDF and this video. Those are the cognitive mechanisms. But when we learn a second language, and actually when we learn any, any other uh, information, we follow these mechanisms. We have affective mechanisms. Affective mechanisms are motivation, attitude, and language anxiety. We're talking about language learning. Okay, so motivation, uh, we are going to talk about that specific topic later on on module three and teacher practice module. But motivation can be, in, can be uh, uh, extrinsic or intrinsic motivation. And it is that which initiates our, or stimulates us, encourages us to start doing something, in this case, learning a language. But not only to initiate the process, but also to maintaining our uh, perseverance in studying until the end. So that will be motivation. Attitude, it's, it says the most, it, it might be the most powerful affective mechanisms because it determines how we are going to approach when we make mistakes, when we uh, feel like not really like studying or practicing, our attitude towards the language is going to be beneficial, but also can be negative into our learning process. Language anxiety, it's another variable, and this uh, refers to that anxiety that we have when we are learning a language, because we might get frustrated if we are not able to communicate properly our uh, feelings, opinions, and express generally what we want to say. So it might affect either negative or positively. It, it depends on the teachers how to create and promote or prompt uh, that attitude and release or decrease that language anxiety from the students. We also have biological mechanisms. When learning a language, we have firstly the silent period, then the critical period, and finally the ultimate attainment. The silent period is this period of life that we have, and talking about our native language, when we are only receiving information, we are only listening to the people talking in our native language. Our brain is just receiving everything, but we are not able to produce yet because everything is being processed in our brain until the moment that we are able to imitate the sounds and understand that those sounds will mean a concept. So from the moment that we are born until the moment that we say our first word, that will be considered to be the silent period. The same happens when we learn a second language. There is a set of time, a frame of time when we are not producing the language and that will be silent period. And when I say not producing the language, we are not doing it consciously. I mean, knowing what we want to say in the target language. So obviously when we learn a second language, the silent period might be a shorter time or a longer time. It would depend on each person. Then we have the, the critical period. This is crucial for all human beings because it, according to Noam Chomsky and some other linguistics, the critical period is the moment when we start creating uh, intelligible sentences or clauses to express our opinions and all the, the environment that is around us and the culture, the accent and everything that is influencing our way of communicating is happening during that time. So it is a critical period because it is during that time, biologically, usually from uh, the moment we are toddlers and we start speaking until the age around, at around um, nine, 10, sometimes even further than that years of age, because we are developing the kind of language and our own speaking and communication style. So this is why it is called critical period. Finally, we have the ultimate attainment. 
This period is basically when we reach the native, like I'm talking about the second language learning, when we reach the native-like uh, skills for all the skills, writing, speaking, listening, and reading. So when we reach that native-like proficiency level, then we could say that we have reached the ultimate attainment of, uh, of a language. Biologically, in the natural terms, this ultimate attainment should uh, be reached by the age of 15 or 16 years of age. However, it's still being developed during the whole life of a person. So these are all the mechanisms that uh, are part of a language learning. It is time to practice. So you can click on the links below to practice your knowledge on second language acquisition and learning. And uh, last but not least, the references. If you want to know more about the topics we have checked today, you can click on the links uh, that are on the PDF document and you can read more on this. Thank you very much. Wait for your next handy lesson.